Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Liu from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woohoo! If you've ever wanted greater flexibility in life, then do we have the Resilience Show for you. Today we'll talk about fixed mindsets, growth mindsets, becoming more resilient, and how to go with the flow no matter what. That Plus we'll talk about editing marathons, waiting on internet, COVID lockdown, getting real, becoming strong, tech chaos, brain rewiring, Jupiter, Saturn conjunct, the soothing sound of jackhammers, <laughs> rooster naps, three interviews in a day, Ruru becoming a man, and what in the world? <laughs> rooster monogamy and <laughs> has to do with anything. <laughs> even put that in there it's all because of the pookie are you ready to shine <laughs> i am ready to shine Woo! okay this Woo! is chakra seven oh, lime and rose oh okay i don't even know where to start i want to, i'm kind of curious about um <laughs> oh, there it goes it's rooster nap time we just got started okay rooster so nap time with me we're going to discuss rooster nap first, but he just asked, can I have a nap? Okay. And so I will oblige. <laughs> so okay. So it, what did you it, just do with Ruru? <laughs> it is almost hard to believe, but we have recently discovered, we know he loves traveling with us and he knows, we know that he loves traveling in the Tesla. He's the only, maybe the world's only rooster <laughs> that, that loves a Tesla ride. And I'm not kidding. He will like be by the door ready to go. It turns out he also likes napping in the Tesla. And so now for interviews, so that it doesn't sound like it's life on the farm, not that there's anything wrong with the farm, he is taking a nap now in uh, Tessie. And I just checked and made sure the climate control is on for him, so a good comfortable 70 degrees. And he's in a uh, dog carrier that he puts oh. himself in. And he's in the dog carrier in, in the Tesla for the next hour. And um, does he and really then, take well, a nap or what does he do? Yeah, here's the thing. What we were learning is that when he's in the house uh, during daytime, he's always on guard. He's always watching for the flock. So this week, and I'll get there, has been a marathon week of edits for our automatic writing book um, of where like last night, I didn't realize the uh, one computer's on one time zone, another's on the other. And I was actually up to a 11.15, CJ. And <laughs> just very world, late for you, yeah. That, that is radical. And Jessica is going, I wonder what that's doing to his circadian rhythm because Ruru was by my side because mm. he's keeping an eye on everybody oh. and he gets cranky. Oh. However, if he gets his naps in in the daytime, time away from us where he doesn't have to worry about tending the flock, he's a lot more chill. He's a lot more resilient so like any growing girl or boy he needs his nap probably all of us need our nap wow. and he gives him a chance to actually power down where with us around he won't power down because he's wired by design to protect his flock so when you're not physically in his presence he doesn't have to like guard anything so he's in the tesla in a cage just like cool it's, it's his little retreat <laughs> Well, it's, a, it's a soft. It's a soft kennel. I wouldn't even call it a cage. It's it's got a a, a soft fleece lined bed in it. Um, it's a soft material. There are no real bars or anything in it. But he goes ah, and and I put a cover over it so it blocks the light. And he goes ah, a time to chill. Different though than the question if he's not in your presence, because if I go out and he's not in nap mode, he might cock a doodle do just like a dog might bark for a while until he thinks oh, I'll give up, but he wants to say, alert, alert, <laughs> the head rooster is not here. The head rooster is not here, which is why mm. I, I went into the bathroom before coming back into the studio to start the show and he started cock-a-doodle doing. He's like, where'd he go? I'm oh. supposed to keep an eye on everybody. Oh, fascinating. He takes his job seriously. Wow, okay, this is so fascinating. So how did you discover, again, that he, can you tell me again, how did you discover the Tesla scenario? I know he likes riding in the Tesla, but how did you know he would end up napping? So it was a hope when we're going, we can't do any more shows with him cock-a-doodle-doing through the whole show. Our goal 
really is to up level everything. And we love Ruru so, so much, but it wasn't exactly an up leveling for him to be going nuts on the mic. Right. And so we put him in his house and we put him out there and he came back in and he seemed calmer and more chill. And then the next interview that was coming out, we put the house out, meaning his, his kennel, before the interview, and he ran in on his own. What do you mean he ran? Oh, that's interesting. He just knew to go there. He's like, okay, it's time for me to go. Goodbye. It's time for me to take a nap. All right, I'll see you guys. And he actually, the, the, the screen wasn't fully open. He pushed his way in and went and started to take a nap. Wow. Wow. Okay. So and so what is happening with him becoming a man? I just can't. I don't even know how to, what to imagine. I'm scared. We're going to try to have, figure out how to thread the, the PG version of this. He is going through puberty right now. Mm -hmm. And as any boy going through puberty, he's a little bit nuts. Mm -hmm. and, and the parents have to learn a lot about resiliency during this time because there's some raging hormones in him. Well, he learned about a week ago, less than a week ago, that we had a stuffed animal chicken called Henrietta okay. that he hadn't taken to or had an attachment to until it kind of became my little stuffed animal Henrietta. But we saw a lot of teenage angst in him. And so we gave him Henrietta. And um, the best way to put it is he figured out how these things work. <laughs> so it's an anatomically correct Henrietta. Nope, nope. It's just your Amazon stuffed animal washable um, Henrietta. And um, <laughs> he is so much calmer now. <laughs> okay, so this Henrietta is not. This is a PG show. I understand. Okay, I get it. And a rooster is monogamous, so. What does this well, mean? Well, about we got him. Hen Henrietta is only 12 inches tall, and, okay. and a rooster is a giant. He's like two and a half feet tall. Oh, wow. And so we got him a bigger one this week who uh, Jessica wanted to come up with a <sighs> – how can you put it? A professional star. You can use another word there for the B word, but a professional star name. And, uh, and, and so I'm not sure if you're, you're following my lead here. They, uh, uh, they tend to work on videos from Vegas. Okay. Oh, um, yes. Okay. I get it. A professional star name. And so she named the new chicken, uh, kind of a James Bond name too, Chicky Galore. Oh, Chicky Galore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Ruru has not taken to Chicky Galore. Apparently he's monogamous. Mm. He's staying with Henrietta. Oh, interesting. Oh, so, but our... Are roosters monogamous, like ducks are, but are roosters? No. No, okay. roosters will take them into the flock and, and, uh, and, and, and anything but. Um, however, it's, it's fascinating. You get up in the morning. He's in, his, he's in his, his house. You open up his house, and he is like burning rubber off of his feet, running for Henrietta as fast as wow. he can. This dude is so hormonally charged. It's unbelievable. Wow. Fascinating. Okay. This is so fascinating. I wish you could get an anatomically correct, Henry. <laughs> That's not me. One. Okay. Uh, apparently, I, without going into detail, there it doesn't work the way most animals work. Okay. And there's just a minor touching of something we'll leave it at that and the job is done wow oh, um, i've seen ducks before in the pond and it's it's kind of like is that what they're doing because it doesn't look like what i would expect but it's, it is just kind of a whoop, and then it's like okay all right it, it's that's probably it and and he he's like you know you know may have a cigarette um, <laughs> <laughs> okay do the jackhammers have to do with soothing ruru i i, I imagine for some well, reason i just to do with soothing us okay because he has been such in a teenage angst and he's now calming down today was probably his second quietest no i'm gonna go with probably his quietest day and two days ago was his second quietest day and we're told we went to this rooster rescue center a few weeks ago we're told that once he gets pu through puberty um things calm down dramatically and how long um, does it Rooster go through puberty. 
two to six months. She's already okay. three months in is the uh... gas. Um, so he's been a um, very proud rooster and making a lot of bugle calls throughout the day. Oh, so there's a and, different sound that that he makes? Well, it's his cock-a-doodle-doo sound. Okay, guys, so it's, not, it's has, not a different, okay. No, but there are different endings that he makes to it. Oh. Um, it's either cock-a-doodle-doo or cock-a-doodle-doo, <laughs> <laughs> which is the cutest sound. And that's the one he tends to make with us all day. If That's, that's a different sound than there's an alert or danger, which is the straight cock-a-doodle-doo. But if it's not... Um, if it's, I need food, I need this, or whatever, it's a whore, he puts at the end of it. <laughs> Which is really cute, but the eardrums are still getting blasted. Yeah. Um, but we have, we have a main house and we have a guest house, and they're finishing the guest house, and they had a jackhammer yesterday to the day before outside in the guest house. And they're jackhammering, and Ruru was so fascinated by the jackhammer that he went quiet. And we were, I was for myself reading a book, interview prep, Jessica was doing something else. And the jackhammer without Roo Roo Cockadoodle doing felt incredibly peaceful and soothing. <laughs> That's resiliency. He has, he has recalibrated us to where a jackhammer is. <sighs> Wow, that is so fascinating. I guess your brain is getting rewired too. <laughs> Completely rewired. And <laughs> the amount of focus that I have now, you would think distracted. No, the amount of focus that I have is tenfold. It's a hundredfold. I've, I've, he's been an amazing teacher in helping me bring it back to center and help me bring it back to center. Um, and it's completely recalibrating what I thought I could handle and not handle as far as sounds, as far as distraction, as far as anything. It's truly <laughs> fascinating. I think he's getting you ready for a potential Vegas if you decide to go back to Vegas again. <laughs> you have like a, he's getting you prepared so you're kind of like, this is nothing. I can live through anything at this point. Oh, wow. Yes, compared to and we, we love him so dearly. We do want him a little bit on the let's get him past puberty side of things. But we're learning. So you can go one of two directions when you have a rooster in your life. And, and the same can be said for a lot, a lot of babies, I'm sure, um, which is you can absolutely go bat poo poo crazy and fall apart, <laughs> which doesn't really help anybody. And you can even start no jokes. You can start screaming at the baby. You can fall apart or you can say, all right. How can I work with this? And you work and you tinker and you try to make things better. And how can I work with this on the inside and reframe like, cock a doodle doo? Oh, that's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and, and you make a different association, a different attachment to it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I was talking, this guy in this five elements class was saying, um, you know, I, I love, you know, he was raised himself in Tibet. And he has a son that's been raised in Palo Alto. And he he's playing all sorts of computer games. And he really, you know, just think just think of the opposite of a Tibetan monastery. And he has this child of comparable age. And when he was a Tibetan monastery, playing like all these games online. And he just said, you know, when someone is freaking out, um, you know, having a, a, a time in puberty, which his son was having, he just, his son would be like, ah, 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 like, he's like, please stop playing the computer or, you know, or like, I'm going to take your, you know, do something right to get him to stop playing the computer. And his son was just launching off on this dialogue. And he said, the key thing that I've learned is the importance of just silence and not saying a thing. Because anything that spews then out of his mouth, I look at and I think, oh, that's cute. Look at him. He's kind of cute when he's angry. And just sit there and wait until the whole thing rolls out. Don't react. Don't really listen at that level where you're taking it personally. You just kind of like listen, to, like listening, but not too deeply because you know that that person is having a moment and you just let it go by. And he says, when you do that, then you're really holding a space. You're listening without adding content. 
And then that person can really hear themselves. And when they hear themselves, they can come back and go, I'm really sorry that I lost my temper with you. There is no reason for that. But if you add anything, like, you shouldn't be yelling at me. I'm your dad. You know, like, if, if that happens and it, like, adds a little complexity to the whole scenario and you give also your child, yeah, you're like, <laughs> you like, you give your child something to grab onto to, like, create a narrative or story. But if you just are silent and the kid's going crazy and you're like, that's cute. And you just let the whole thing ride out. You're not adding. And he said, this is the one thing that we all have to do is to just be silent and hold space and not add any. The minute we say anything, our ga the game is lost or, you know, the, everything is lost. You just don't say anything. And, and how true could that be for all interactions Yeah. to let that person get it out with, with we'll go with your, your duck here, with it going the water off of the back, but they're feeling like you at least heard them on some level, but you didn't have to take the ball and then go hit it back to them. You just sit there and let them like take, you know, whatever their flamethrowers and, and not necessarily protect yourself. Like you don't. You don't let yourself and get burned. we're not burned. talking about energy vampires where you're just getting... Yeah, no, you're just like, that's really cute. Look at him. He's cute when he's angry. It's just like Rue getting mad or like cock -a -doodle doing you're like, Rue! You're like, oh, that's cute. You know, <laughs> that's what it reminded have, me of that I story. I had the occasion of saying that to, to Jessica. You're really cute when you're mad. That's not the point. <laughs> But it works. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't say anything until the end. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I just love that um, I, we were talking about brain rewiring, and I really feel like the same on Tuesday. Um, I, I Did I tell you about this chiropractor that I'm seeing that kind of adjusts you physical for structural things, emotional things? Like he'll... He'll have a bi bunch of vials and you hold like confusion or anger and it's like he muscle tests you and see what it is. it's the, the weirdest and actually most efficacious chiropractor that I've ever had. Like it was at the last resort. So I did this. I'm doing all these things where he's adjusting my oh. astral level, my physical structural level, my emotional level and and getting to the point where my ankle, which has been incredible, it's been shifting, like the pain has been shifting around as he's been working with these energies in my body, physical, emotional. Um, and, and on Tuesday, I started on Saturday, like my face is, my face still feels numb. Like if you touch it, it's like, it's numb. Like I, you could literally wow. take a book and hit me on the face and be like, what? <laughs> like I just don't feel anything. <laughs> So I, I, <laughs> so I I mentioned to him like I'm numb and I'm like itching and I'm getting hives and my body is going through my central nervous system feels like it's getting rewired which is ultimately what you're trying to do in in um meditation and doing these tantric yoga you're trying to basically calm the central nervous system down but sometimes it has to get a little bit crazy before it gets a little bit better so I went there on Tuesday and he was doing like he must have been like doing all these things for about half an hour first of all I was just, like kind of tender a little bit like you know when I walked in there and he was releasing and guiding and asking my body permission to for how much I could deal with each and every time so you know I trusted that this was the right thing to do and then, because he's muscle testing my body, and it's like, yes, keep bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. And then I hit like a point, like stop. So I got home, and it was like, you know those Disney movies where you have someone that are like, you know, like they have the eyeballs coming out with the eyeball hanging at the end of a, of a boingy spring yes, yes, yes. yes it was like that like little parts of my body were on the floor like my mind I was like Bleh, you know I, just, no, I don't know if I had drool but it would have be completely consistent with how I was feeling I talked to a friend I'm like I, I'm sorry I just I can't even talk to you right now because I had a friend who I was talking to at that time we do a trading coaching session I was like I I can't even talk right now I'm so unglued like I and it's it's interesting because we in our spiritual practices we were we talk about like I want to let go of the ego I want to like surrender 
And when this stuff happens, it doesn't happen like the way that you're expecting it to happen. It's very disarming. I, I thought I was, I mean, I literally was losing some aspect of my mind and my body and every, everything had just come unsprung, undone. And the only thing I could do was lie in bed and meditate. That was the, o- the only thing that brought me solace. And then after I calmed my body down so that it wasn't itching, buzzing or whatever, I took a hot shower, but it was just, I've never had that level of undoneness ever. It, it's crazy. That is so cool. We've just launched our uh, new logo this week, and we've got a whole logo line of organic clothing, which is kind of cool, a print on demand, so there's no inventory, but organic clothing on YouTube people can get with the Phoenix Rising. Nice. That's what you're talking about, completely coming disintegrated so that you can be rebuilt and rise. Yeah, but it's very – it's – it's alarming because what people don't talk about during the transformation period is this complete dissonance. And, and I've never had it on a physical level, but it was quite alarming for me. And I'm, I'm sharing this so that I can help other people who have gone through kind of a similar thing. I mean, it is disarming when this happens and I do feel like it's, part of the natural process and it's still happening it's not as if all these symptoms are gone they've that was like the peak and i've been coming down the peak from a different place but it's hard i mean i can barely remember what i said like two sentences ago like my brain (laughs) it's it's like i have zero almost zero short-term memory and you have to remember Chicky Galore. Yeah, I, I do remember Chicky Galore. But, you know, <laughs> it's just like the amount of things that I can retain in my brain. It, it's it's like I feel like my brain is rewiring at the same time. And it's I, I've got to share something that I learned that I was so excited about. Um, I, I went to my teacher and he was talking about top down or bottoms up kind of practices and so if you're doing a meditation practice like a a a focused concentration on a candle or breathe kind of calm mind down and hoping from the top down you're bringing a sense of peace and calm and that that permeates like you're rewiring your brain um up above and like changing the vibrational frequency of everything below so that it remembers what calm centered true nature is right so that's top down and the bottom up is this kind of like you're doing yoga and breathing you know i'm going through and getting this body work and massage and all this kind of thing and it kind of is like working from the bottom all the way up and and then it's like and then you're kind of like meeting these two things at the same time so that even though I'm going through the bottom way and my like my eyeballs boinging out of my head, um, I'm kind of like trying to keep calm. So even as things are falling apart, I have like and it's all going to be OK, you know, and it, it just reminds me of your scenario this week with your chicken, <laughs> with the rooster rather. Oh. I love that it's all going to be okay because we, we got our book back from the editor on Friday mm-hmm. and it's it's gone through layout and, and so the steps are you have your regular editing, you have your final editing, you have your it goes to layout and turns into what looks like a book and you check to make sure the layout's okay and then it goes through final layout production and then you proof it for finer minor mistakes, you know commas, things like that and then one more round and then you're done. And our book will be out January 29th. It's amazing how this works. Yeah. We got it back Friday and it turned out there was somehow, we'll call it a missing step in going from the editor to the layout to us. And there are all these corrections, majority minor. It's yeah. going to be all right. It, it, edits that get to be made, but got us in a, they wanted it back Monday. They didn't get it till Wednesday to make deadline though. We started Friday afternoon marathon sessions of all day, every day, just edit, 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 edit. And you could go nuts or you can say, it's all okay. It's all okay. Now, much easier for me 
Jessica, years ago, I promised her I would never put her in the editorial role again because she hears me enough. She hears me on air. She hears me talking to her. <laughs> and then to have to read and hear my voice in print. <laughs> it's enough is enough. <laughs> and yet she said, let me see this thing. And she goes, oh, no, I've got to take a crack at this, too, because we want this to be a book that stands the test of time. And so going from it's all okay to I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and back and forth again. You um, told me I never. <laughs> so, but, but all you can do is observe this and go to the, like you said, it's all right. Yeah. It's oh, it's almost like talking to a child, how we get to speak to ourselves. Yeah. It's all right. And she did magnificently. And the book was really good. I'm super proud of it. But what she did in this final round of edits was stunning. You got to go, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Just like with Ruru last week on camera. That's how we speak to get to speak to ourselves. Yeah. It was such a beautiful modeling of how we can talk to ourselves. And, and you know... It, one of the things that I've noticed this couple of weeks, I've talked to a couple of clients. Everyone is just like, I haven't done anything. I can't seem to get it together. And I was like, what? And then I talked to a guide who did an astrological reading. It's like, yeah, that's basically what this time is all about. It's about maybe studying, but don't try to have ambitious goals where you're trying to do. I mean, you had a deadline, so it's like it, that was imminent. But like, if you're finding that you can't do anything, you're unorganized, you're not giving your to-do list, like this is part of, um, in the Taoist way, it's like, it's during, it's kidney time, it's a time to rest, to go inside and to like power down. So if, if that is what is around us and is being amplified around us, it's really hard. So when you buck the trend, right? Like you did this weekend, it was probably completely outside of what's energetically around you, which made it like 500 times worse. Well, it's, it's really interesting too, because, uh, the state officially in, in our County in uh, particular went under a COVID lockdown. Yeah. And so the energy around you is one of, I don't know if I want to say a calm stillness, but a non-doingness, yeah. at least. And then you feel that it's sort of like getting up Christmas Day. And, and if you have to go into work or if you're a healthcare worker, you're our heroes. But having to punch the clock on Christmas Day is hard. Yeah, it really is super hard. I mean, I, so if people were feeling us right now, because I was feeling it, and then it's, it's so hard because I'm, I'm having the voice like, well, you should be doing... And it's like, it's okay. <laughs> this is the energy around you is not this way. And you're just tuning into the energy, flowing with the energy. Yes, you're not getting a lot of things done. You're not being productive. And it's okay. And, and actually... I mean, it's the darkest time of the year for a reason. That drawing inwards, a, a tree soaks up the majority of the water for the year this time. It is drawing from the roots, drawing upward, drawing inwards. That's what we get to do. And if we try to buck that trend, we're not giving ourselves. So years ago, I, I, I watched my cycling career and I look at the key points where it could have gone one way, but my ego drove me another. And, and that's why I, I consider myself such an incredibly talented athlete, Olympic Training Center athlete. Raced and beat Lance Armstrong at the Olympic Training Center for a box of power bars. <laughs> you know, <laughs> early on, he could have stomped on me after. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but in, in high school, I had my first coach very briefly. And she was a national champion in the time trial, the race against the clock. And in the fall of the first year working together, she said, um, to continue as your coach, I ask one thing of you. I need you to take off from riding from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Wow. That's a long time. And you know what I said? I don't want to. Not a chance. I wouldn't do it. I could not get myself to listen to her because the doer mind had to go, go, go. 
but she is saying you needed a reset. You need to have that pause or that draw inward period. Fast forward, I won the first race of the year. I might even set a record in one of the first time trials of the year. And then I was cooked. <laughs> <laughs> she was right, but I had missed the opportunity oh, to work with a national champion because I was fighting a natural pattern that's healthy for us. Mm. I lived in Maui for three and a half years. You didn't have that natural cycle. You could get mm. lost and lose that kind of giant circadian rhythm, giant wheel. And you never functioned for myself. We never functioned in our business tanked there. We never had peaks because we never allowed ourselves to come down and rest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's another thing to um, tune up to because I know you think about these things. So on December 21st, um, Jupiter and Saturn are conjunct. Did you know this? And, the, and it hasn't happened in it, it hasn't happened in Aquarius in a very very long time, but the guidance I've been given and it actually co co um, it, it's it happened at the same time as the winter solstice, and so there's these three powerful things that are happening all on December 21st. So this is the day to power down and go inside and get clear with what we want to accomplish because it will set, if we're intentional and conscious, it will set our template up for the next 20 years. Have you heard the same thing? You're kind of nodding like, yes, I've heard this. Yes, I've heard this, although I'm not as dire. The look on your face was eek. So, oh. <laughs> but, but, but it is a big cycle and it is a, a big coming around of a wheel. And so it's a great, great opportunity to plant intention. However, I don't want to panic people to where well, if you didn't do it, then everything's. Oh yeah. Seems... It happens over between the now and February and it's going to be happening over the next 20 years. <laughs> so it's, it's. But, you know, to the extent that you could be conscious that this is happening and you're leaning into it and being clear with what you want and planting seeds. Well, That's Solstice nice. to me has, um, I, I have a dear friend, he, he married us by the name of Zach, and um, he's uh, one of the top physicists out there, worked on the Hubble mirrors and on little mosquito nanobots that could go into structures where they've collapsed and find and rescue people. And he talked about, and I guess he had done his uh, PhD on uh, the mass of the earth and tectonic movement. Mm. And for solstice, what's happened is you have this giant, giant rock that has been leaning one direction and comes to a halt. Billions and billions of billions of ton, tons of rock and stop for a moment. And then start swinging the other direction. Wow. And to plant, it's like a zero point. We've all been those amusement park rides where they kind of launch you up. And before you come down, you're like, oops, that was a mistake. I'm about to be thrown off of the ride at that zero point. But I believe planting intention at the zero point, And you're talking about a multiple zero point here. At that zero point and linking in to those energies. Because that's what you're doing. You're kind of hooking in. Or, or, you know, taking a harpoon, a harmless harpoon, and hooking into those energies or, or a grappling rod or something. Yeah. And then you get pulled and all your attentions get taken the direction you want to go with some massive mass behind it. That's yes. what you're talking about. Yes. That's what – yes. And I, I don't think it's the end of the world. Like, I, like, it, like you know, you have three months – December to I think February. I, I have a YouTube on it that I'm going to be launching soon that he talks cool. about the different timing of it. But I do think it's kind of an interesting, I mean, I feel like you and I have been preparing for this thing over the last year. Like, I think you kind of know this is because I've been kind of like getting clearer and clearer about the societal impact and the collective work that I want to do. And, and it's like, it's just been you know, building over time as have you, I mean, I've watched you and you're doing the same thing. So I think there's, 
there's a certain part of us that's already doing this, right? Because, I mean, if to have that kind of massive energetic pull, you feel it way before it happens. And so I think it's been happening probably over the last year for the two of us. So it means it, it's a great time right now to go sit down with your partner, sit down with yourself, just sit down and go, you know, pull out a piece of paper, pull a, pull out a, an easel or, or just be and say, what do I want? Where am I going? Where are we going? What would we like? How would we like to get there? Is this where we get to stay? And just start asking all of these questions now so that you become as crystal and clear as you can for planting these seeds rather than if you pay attention to mainstream news, politicians, whomever, we're told to be zombies during this time. Just just uh, be afraid, do this, do that. No, use this as the most awesome time in the world to plan, create, and sculpt what's coming next. So when I talk to this guy, he, so you basically, if you get an astrological chart and you see where your Jupiter and the house in which your Jupiter and Saturn resides, that will give you kind of an indication on the arc that you could think about. So for me, it's about um, the eighth house, which is about finances. And so he had said that when he had gone through this same phase 20 years ago, he'd refinance his house. And another time you had a big investment in some type of business. So that's what it is for me, but it's actually looking at your astrological chart and seeing which house it is. So you get a sense of the flavor for what's going to happen. Very, very cool. You're making me think I want to get some sort of a reading on myself and on Jessica and on the two of us together yeah. for the new year and see what that means. That could be kind of, kind of cool. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool. I think it'd be, and, uh, and I think it's, it's, whatever. Do you believe it? Do you not believe it? That's your choice, right? I mean, for me, it's like, well, it's I believe story. it and why on not? level, it's all story. It's all guidance. Where'd it come from? It comes from source, whether it's real or whether the story comes from source, it's all here to coax us and help us on our path. Yeah. Is it going to harm you to do this? No. <laughs> may it help you and may oh, your planets align to you? I got so they fall out of their chair. <laughs> Whoa, God, lock yourself up. You're yeah, I never will. No it's, it's probably like I would think like can help her to actually be conscious and think about in a very disciplinational way what it is that in, in this case, it's like he had said it's vocation. They're focusing on your vocational work and it doesn't necessarily mean the paid work. It's so your vocation as in the work of your heart. Like what is that? What is the heart work that you came in to bring to the collective? Like what is your individualized contribution to the collective that is uniquely yours and your vocation? And so that would be one way I'll, I'll send you the link to the show. He's doing, he'll do a much better explanation than I will. And, or, and of course you'll probably interview someone that can um, tell you more about it than I could. But anyway, something to it's think cool about. Because we are finishing. So the, the book, we did the marathon around it and it's got it to the publisher yesterday. They've already miraculously turned it around and we have this weekend for the final, final edits. Yeah. And then it goes to print on or about solstice. Ooh. Which is kind of <gasps> Ooh. Fascinating when you think about it. And everybody, I, if you're getting, if you're even considering getting the book, get it early. There's a whole bunch of bonuses. But when you pre-order it on Amazon, it helps the book to be found. Yeah. And then more people can find this. Thing. And and this is a game-changing book because it's 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 really learning how to be able to channel and plug into source. And so if there's a mission coming out for into the new year, I know we're going to have Netflix. We're going to have all this great stuff. But if we can just teach this to the world, we're, we're, we're pretty darn happy. Yeah. And it's planting itself without having anything to do with us. Yeah. We had nothing to do with these dates on solstice. I love cool. it. Oh, I'm so, that could, I'm just beyond happy to hear that that is what a, a auspicious, very auspicious. I'll get all, Dow is Chinese on you, very auspicious, Michael, to it have it go out of this. Thing. And, and it, is, it, is, it is very suspicious because, I mean, the universe, it's always, to me, it's a giant cosmic setup. It was supposed to come out this past fall, and with everything that took place, there was no way for it to. And you can go, oh, it didn't come out. This is wrong. That's wrong. and Or place judgment, whatever that means. Instead, you go, is as it is, perfect. Perfect. It's okay. It's okay. 
This sounds perfect. Yeah, because and it's who, like the, who the, wanted the, to buy a. Oh, go I was talking to an astrologer a while ago, and she really looks at the launch day of a project because that's the birthday oh, of your book. So I think it's the perfect birthday launching point and. God, you have the stars aligned around this book. So, yay! So happy. Thank you. I remember when we launched our show, which we uploaded on 9 11 to bring light to the world. And then it launched on uh, 9 14 of 2015. And we had looked at the astrological chart and we had looked at the, uh, the Chinese calendar to see what is the best day. And I think I groove on it. Whether it's real or not, to me, it's really positive. You're sending so it along quiet. intentionally. Yeah, and sending it intentionally. Okay, so before we um, before we fi finish, um, the internet getting real. I had my own technical chaos where I can't seem to load any of my YouTube videos on. I, the show that we did last week didn't get recorded. I mean, it's just <laughs> technical chaos after another. What's happening to you? Well, it's interesting. I, I have had a interview marathon for four interviews over the last 30 hours, uh, potentially because what do you know? People aren't going to want to necessarily do interviews over Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Eh. So we're, we're getting a bunch right now and um, we're still getting settled in in this um, home here in the desert. It's just this amazing home. And so we've had great internet, we've had okay internet, we've had decent internet, we've had no internet. And it's all going around as we're still waiting for the official internet to come in next week. Oh, wow. And the connection with you is phenomenal. The connection I had yesterday was phenomenal. The connection for the last guest was phenomenal. The connection for my guest, uh, Joe Vitale, this morning was not. Mm. And it's interesting. I go back and look at it. And I go, could I have different, because we have four different internet possibilities, four different providers we're working through here. Could I have done something differently? Yes. Do I wish that I had? Yes. In reality, was there anything I could do about it? No, because it worked out just as it should. Mm -hmm. It was a, here's the time we have to work with. How much time do you want to take on tech versus how much time do you want to have to have an interview that... Uh, acoustically was flawless eh, maybe be in one or two skype bubbles but the image was a bit pixelated oh, and so man. you balance these things and you just your heart goes out but you just have to let go into them people are used to that now too i think you know because you can't predict if it's gonna like you know all of a sudden you're pixelating and you have this like slow movement so but i feel you it's hard and how miraculous that you could talk to him anyway. So for the internet, so it's a mixed bag. It was cool. He's a homie. And it was a lot of fun. It was such great energy. And the interviews that are coming in right now, I really like it. There's a lot of money interviews coming mm. in, which is not by design. It Well, it's by universe design. We had nothing to do with it. But I believe that a lot of us, yourself included, certainly, were looking at our finances for this new year in particular. Mm -hmm. And so all of these guests seem to be money guests seem to be aligning themselves to help our audience to take off. And, and, and it's me search. So mm -hmm. our finances is great, but let's take them to a whole new level. Let's yeah. plant that intention. Yeah. For and so sure. having these guests come in at this time is like, how does it get any better than this? That is great. Woo all right. So anything else, Michael? No, I just, I'm so I'm so excited about this time, even though it is the opposite of easy. And it is all about reframing and resilience, reframing and resilience. How can I look at this differently, no matter the circumstance? And, and if you've never followed anything before, and I'm not even really shared it with, with CJ that much, that much, I had a summer where I ate dog food, um, oh, wow. kibbles. That's all I could afford was the same food that I was feeding my dog, a vegan kibble. And so I ate kibble for a summer and I had a year and a half where I couldn't afford gas in the house. Wow. And in the winter time in Colorado, I would open the stove, which was electric, put a fan on the top of the stove and blow hot air into the house. That was the only way to warm oh. it and had the coldest showers. I get it. I've been through there. But this to me is such a, and we want to stay healthy, but it's such a cool transitional period where if you reframe, you say, okay, this hurts right now. But something magical is going to come out of it. And we were on a bus in an RV tour for months where we had these massive, massive drives and then did work on top of it. 
Now, okay, we had almost a week of marathon edits. That's easy. We got this. Yeah. And for all of us coming out of 2020, whether you've been hospitalized or whatever, and I won't even talk about the amount of time we've been hospitalized, you're Superman now. You're Superwoman coming out of this. The resilience that you have is to me worth far more than the admission, than the ticket price. So, and if you are sick and if someone in your life has passed on, I sense so much love. I get it. I get it. I get it. But we're going to rock this new year. Yeah. We, the collective, we are going to rock this and we have got this. Yeah, I'm, I'm viewing this as a time to evolve and using this hardship, like the pressure of, you know, a piece of coal to be the shining diamonds that we are there. There's so many people that I'm coaching right now that have never shown up. And finally, they are like, it's time for me to show up. I'm like, yes, it is absolutely the world needs you. You need to show up. And I could not be more thrilled than seeing you in your brilliance showing up. That's what you're designed to do. That's what we're all designed to do. We may need to have some retrofits and changes and and it's all for good. So even when everything feeling feels as if it's falling apart, it's like you're saying it's a phoenix, it's the dissonance and the disintegration so something new can emerge. Woohoo! Woo I want to take our show to the next level. We're going to. We'll be in Netflix next year. I want to take the show to the next level. And so I'm all about being pro. And yet we've had, like you, equipment challenge after equipment challenge after internet after internet. I'm convinced that's the part of the cosmic setup to help us be more pro, not so that we can judge in the moment and go, look at where you are. We're all like Lego spilled out all over the floor <laughs> right now. It's okay. Yes. That was pretty close. <laughs> it's that tail off. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like adding, mating the sound of a cockadoodle doo to a turkey. Uh, <laughs> so for everybody <laughs> out there, so it's like a cockadoodle. Instead of woohoo, we should do a cockadoodle. I think that's what he is. He's a, and you can look up the term, a clarion. He's a bugle. <laughs> it's a bugle with a shrill sound. And we love him so, so dearly. He's so, so cute. So for everyone out there, this is... Michael, Michael Sandler. Sandler. <laughs> CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ Show. Be well, have fun, reframe, be resilient, send love, do what you can to keep yourself healthy, Dive in on the inside and know you have beyond got this. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Cock-a-doo-doo!